Hi, everybody. Sorry about that. Um, it didn't work, um, but you can see the background movies compilation of the site and some of the issues we're interested in on this, and we'll try and get it online once, you know, once we finish this talk. Um, we're going to introduce ourselves briefly because we're new to Oxford Brooks, just like speed dating. We're going to tell you a bit about each other. We have worked together in teaching and collaborations in the past. Um, so I think we'll do that, and then we're going to talk a bit about uh, the, the trip and the site, and then some of the issues that are interesting, interesting to us, which we hope you'll be interested in too. Um, I'd just first of all like to say we're really expecting you all to be very creative, inquiring individuals, and we would like to work with you as individuals. We'll be here as a sort of network, a framework to set some general issues and agendas, and then we're really looking for very committed students who really want to understand their own position and to work on that basis. So the first project, there'll be a short first project, which will be uh, up until the trip, which is making, it's really much about fabrication, and after that it's going to be us working with you to develop your individual projects. Okay, this is just a brief introduction. I live in London, middle of Summerstown. Uh, I have a practice called Boyaski Mafia Architects. Um, we build buildings in London, housing, things like that. We also work on large scale kind of environmental projects. That's my day job, as it were. Can you go back one? So, yes, yeah, next one, please. It's my day job. We also, I also do a lot of writing. I do a lot of research into Asian cities. I'm part of a group called Urban Flashes. And we do um, urban scale um, research projects into cities. And this is just a map to show you <laughs> where I teach. I have taught and teach at the moment both in the States, Europe, and the Far East. And this is an example of uh, student work from Camilla and myself who we were teaching in the Bartlett a couple of years ago. This is a project by Ming for an area of Istanbul. Hi everyone, um, I'm Camila Sotomayor. Um, I'm currently finishing my PhD at the Bartlett in Architectural Design and I've been teaching there for five years in the um, Early Design Program where I first started teaching with um, Nicholas there in 2010. Yeah, dog years. Um, and so I'm originally from Chile by way of California. This is Chile, very quaint. Um, I've also been uh, running, uh, sort of directed and founded the Department of Decay at the Bartlett, which is a platform that um, explores all matter of material decomposition. Um, but then also it's kind of expanding into areas of sort of critical theory and um, sort of psychology, uh, things kind of that are looking into us having a far more affirmative view on death and life and how we can possibly begin to change our consciousness regarding these things um, through design, through making. Um, so this is some of the work that we've been doing um, in the department. Working with uh, photography um, and also sort of designing at the microscopic level, which is a scale that is sort of uh, relatively unused within the discipline of design. <coughs> no. Yeah. Uh, so one of the projects that we're currently working on is the headquarters where we're going to be housed. Uh, so originally the DOD was a work of hyperstition, uh, taken from Nick Land and the CCRU at Warwick University um, during the 90s. And so this is uh, a kind of aerial view of the entrance. Um, so we've been working with uh, sort of materials like pyrite. Um, and so using other sites next to it to kind of look at how we can bury and exhume the building. Um, one of the projects that's upcoming for us is uh, a project in Rio Tinto, Spain, which originally was a mining site with um, sort of British miners there. And now currently the landscape has a pH level of 2.4, which is an acidity level that can cut through metal. So the interesting thing about this landscape is also that it's used as a Mars proxy site, and we're going to be the department's going to be visiting it um, next year and doing a project um, with this. 
This is some of my student work from the last couple of years. Maria, um, she's originally from Cyprus. This is her work on land reform in Cyprus, looking at how you can accelerate a kind of production in Cyprus using um, agriculture and sort of a point pivot uh, production. Um, this is uh, some really amazing uh, fake landscapes by Sam. Uh, so this is in Marseille, Foss, which is the second largest uh, port in all of the Med. And so he basically was sort of looking at geotrauma, elements of geotrauma, which we'll be kind of looking at within the unit, um, and terraforming to construct these landscapes to kind of challenge our idea about uh, the space that we live in. Okay, so I'm Jason Coleman. Um, I grew up in a small Canadian town of 900, under the shadow of the sort of Kabuzia in Manhattan, which fed the nine million turkeys of the uh, village. Um, obviously, I fled from there as quickly as I could. Went to architecture school, ended up doing something like this. No jobs in Canada, no jobs in America. Berlin Wall had fallen down, so I headed to Berlin. Presented this to my boss, who said, oh, do you think you could build your project? I said, yeah. So he started giving me bigger projects to do. So we did, in succession, 200 houses in East Berlin, 500 houses, then 8,000 houses. That was a bit big, and I thought I'd like to get back to building things, so I fled back to London, where I met Nicholas, where we worked on some of his early research and competitions. At the same time, Nicholas asked me to teach, Peter Salter asked me to teach in East London, where our units sort of specialized in actual making. We did a lot of just one-to-one -one constructions. I also at the same time met a man called Robert Dye, who I've worked with now for 18 years, and we do small sort of houses, one-off projects in London, which these are just examples of, a bit distorted. So, same time, Robert and I taught also at the Bartlett in Urban Design, parallel to um, Nicholas and Camilla, and these are just examples of different ways of working with our students. Okay, um, I'm just going to briefly uh, introduce the project and the trip. Now, we, we've chosen the site of Estonia, which is um, on the Baltic Sea, it's a former Russian colony, should we say, and it became free in the, you know, in the general perestroika movement. Uh, we're very interested in these in-between situations where, where, where a country has been overtaken, is, is now free, and is joining up with the West, but there's also the threat of the East, and all the reconnections with the history of the Baltic region. So these are, these are images giving you an idea of uh, what, what this one is like. This is a, a Soviet prison that's been flooded now. I just want to, the, the, the journey that we're taking you is first of all to Helsinki, where we will take a boat to Tallinn. And then on our way back, we will spend time in Stockholm. And this, um, you, as students, you'll be working alongside students from Tallinn Art Academy, from Helsinki's Alto University and from the Medjam in Stockholm as part of a bigger project called Ultima City, which is a sort of research project and creative project about the Baltic states. The idea being that the projects that you work on you work on will be exhibited next year in Helsinki as part of this celebration of the um, anniversary of, of, of Finland. Part of the thing, what we'll be doing in and with all the other students is taking a walk, a two-day walk across Estonia to sort of unpick, unpeel the landscape and look at sites. And we'll be led by a group of Italian artists, architects called Stalker, who are very well known for taking walks through cities and landscapes to uncover them. <laughs> so this is Stalker in Rome. This is the walk we will take, which will go from Jagala, which is the setting of uh, Tarkovsky's film Stalker, it's a, a waterfall and an abandoned hydroelectric plant. We'll walk to Mardu, which is a fascinating city, and then to Tallinn. And these are some of the, the scenes we might see. This is the film. That's Jagala, that's Mardu, and this is Tallinn. This is a mapping by Stalker. We're, we're really interested as a way of starting a project by mapping. And this is a map of Rome where well, they actually marked out all the vacant areas of the city. And the slide you saw two before was the, the people walking through an empty city. So we're interested in this kind of what mapping does and how it represents territories. This is um, leading into the first exercise we'll be doing. This is an aerial photograph of Mardu. 
And we see the landscape as what we call the Anthropocene, which I think Jason and Camilla will be talking about shortly. But that's a, uh, the landscape is man-made and it's affected and everything is in response to what we do. There's no idea of a sort of virgin, natural, naive landscape. This is an aerial photograph that shows many different layers. It shows you know, the historic town, which you can see Soviet encampments, you can see strange waterworks, you can see industrial um, settlements. And the first exercise we want you to do is really work with an aerial photograph and to uh, make it from above and then from below. And we're obviously interested in camouflage. This, this is something just to do with manipulation of image. This is the First World War, photograph of the First World War by a photographer called Frank Hurley. But he found that war sites were so boring that he had to make them more interesting. So all the photographs of the First World War are actually fabricated. You can see how images were made. Talking about Anthropocene, this is another person we really want to introduce you to called Trevor Paglin, who's a, a, a geographer and an artist who takes pictures and explores the kind of black operation movements of the American security forces. That's a, an exposure of the sky for 43 minutes showing nine different covert satellites that are constantly circling the world. So, as Nicholas mentioned before, um, a lot of what we are kind of fascinated by and basically the conversations that we've had so far, um, just between the three of us, have been sort of coalescing into these ideas about um, sort of what is happening to the, and not just the environment around us, but the kind of landscapes that we are considered normative. So, um, because of things like global warming, um, as a result of human impact on the Earth, you have this idea of a kind of anthropogenic impact or the Anthropocene appearing. 